hello and welcome to my video. Uh, this is going to be a brief one, I hope. Um, all I'm going to do really is add some glazes to the sky and also um, something on the land, a bit of light green or maybe yellow oak or something, uh, just so that I can lift it up a little bit because it's quite grey. So let me just show you the top. It goes all the way up there. Um, so maybe I'll start at the top and work down. Now I, I, I like the sky. It's got a nice sort of freshness to it. And um, so I don't want to I don't want to knock it back too much, but I want I want to sort of experiment. And I've got I've got a colour here which may be uh, interesting. Um, and it's called violet blue. Now straight from the tube it may be a little bit um, a bit too much maybe. Let's uh, somebody did say to me the other day, let's have a look at your palette. Well, it's not a mysterious palette by any means. It's just that paper palette. That's the um, violet blue. And as you can see, it's quite potent. Um, and I don't want to sort of, as I said, zap the sky too much. So this is it with a fair amount of oil in it. Again, as usual, not drippy. Uh, just loosened up a bit. Although it is a glaze, and of course glazing you can do with the painting lying down flat. It doesn't have to be upright. But, um, let's just see what we get. So I've, I've, got, a, I've got a dark colour up in the corner here, uh, as you can see. I hope you can see. Oh, well, you're seeing all of the top. Yeah, that's it. That's OK. Um, so a good, you know, the thing with glazes, put it on, take it off. And don't worry about it. And a few little straggly bits just there on the white. Uh, maybe take it across there under that cloud slightly, I think. So it's going to be the dark side of the painting that's going to have that. There, is, there are shadows there and here, but I don't know, maybe just a touch. But I'll probably do something with um, cadmium orange. Um, or orange vermilion, not sure yet. Probably, um, probably orange vermilion, I think. So that's the paint on. Now the thing to do is to take the paint off. But, you know, you don't put it all on, take it all off. You just sort of leave a bit of a stain, like so. And I think that there is actually quite Quite interesting. I like that. It is one of the one of these colours where I think with glazing you are going to wipe off quite a lot because you don't want to go. As I said, you know, you don't, I don't want to swamp the painting. It's actually quite nice. Now, then maybe that's a little bit too blue, a little bit too much of a blue rinse going on there. And you can decrease that quite easily. Um, and all I'm going to do is just sort of add a bit more oil to it, just on the paper. And that will actually uh, have the same effect as using turpentine. It'll loosen the paint up a bit, which means that I can uh, have a bit more control about what I wipe off. But also, you see in here, uh, I've got these white bits, I want to keep them. And um, so I'll use a bit of elbow grease on there. Like so. And it literally is as easy as that. So we're starting to get some of that light hitting the side of the cloud uh, back again. But it is one of these colours. It's um, it's in the same for me anyway. It's in the same category as um, alizarin crimson. Oh, yeah, I did mention once. I think about alizarin crimson. If you buy a tube, big tube, that's it for life. You you you'll never get rid of it. It's, uh, it's just always going to be there. It's um, a, a volatile colour.
Yeah, you've got to be quite brutal. Glazing is not necessarily a delicate operation. It is, uh, it is more when you're using it on a portrait. But on a landscape, I think it's one of those colours where you can just sort of hammer it, hammer it on and hammer it off. Okay, so that's added a little something to the sky there. I don't want to go too far. I mean, it's like, you know, even when I was a student, I, wa I might have been a hippie, but um, I wasn't into uh, the typical um, day glow colours that uh, were all the rage back then. I've always been a, a traditionalist. I must have been a very strange hippie. Nothing, uh, I don't think I ever did anything psychedelic. Now I've got, obviously I've got a stain of that colour on the brush here. Um, and I'm not going to let that worry me too much. I'm going to add that to the orange colour. Now what's on the brush won't make much difference. It'll be mostly orange. but. Um, Let's just see. Hmm, interesting. You know, the last video I made, I um, I think I, you know, I don't know about you, but I get words stuck in my head, and one of my words at the moment is interesting, and I, I, I it's not um, not some habit. It's not a habit I want to get into because. It'll make my videos less interesting. So I'm going to try not to say it. Maybe I'll substitute it for fascinating. Um, <laughs> maybe I will come up with a completely new word. Now that is actually starting to look quite fascinating. Um, the, I have to say the uh, paint, the original painting, is almost dry. It's not completely dry. Um, this is a demonstration picture, so I don't really care um, if the painting falls apart in a few years' time. Um, I don't think it will necessarily, uh, but it, you know, uh, it's a teaching video. It's not a, it's not a, a majestic work of art. Just to give you an idea of what you can do and what you can get away with. And the main thing is persevere. Keep at it. And uh, always remember, keep it in your head, even though you don't believe it, because if, if you repeat it enough, you will believe it eventually. Skies are easy. Compared to some things, uh, the sky is the easiest part of the painting because it's so free and, uh, you know, you don't have to... In fact, you, I don't think you even need any drawing uh, talents whatsoever. Not with something like that. OK, so that's starting to be... Um, well, not what I would call an interesting sky, um, but uh, a colourful one. I like it. Now, here, there's a bit of white. Can you see that? I guess so. <clears throat> there's a bit of white sky under there, and I want it whiter. So, as you can see, if I concentrate on that area a bit, it brings it out. And this here, that could be... Yeah, that's quite nice. So you get a lot of chances with glazing. You can, um, you know, completely change a painting and decide you don't like it and then go back. Purely by a little bit of careful wiping. I'm, I'm going to just sort of experiment here a little bit. I've got some um, white paint on my palette. It's quite sticky. 
which means uh, that it's dried off a bit. But I'm not going to add oil to it. I've just got a little bit on this piece of paper here. And uh, I'm just going to see what happens if I... See, I'm looking, I'm looking at the sky as a piece of design. It's not a sky yet, not in my mind anyway. It's a bit of design, and I've got to make that design sell. That's what you have to say, sell paintings. I think you don't push them down people's throats. You, you make them so that they are irresistible. That's one idea anyway. I, I was chatting um, about an hour ago on Zoom with the artist that I will be doing a collaboration with and we were talking about selling paintings and I think we're both in the same mind that what you don't do is you don't push you don't push the painting down people's throats. I, I've never done that. I've always thought, well, if people want a painting, if they want to buy a painting, they'll come and ask. And if they don't ask, it doesn't matter. I, I um, get as much enjoyment out of teaching. So there we are. Look, there's a bit of white glazing. Just to make the cloud a little bit... A little bit more... Well, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm, I'm adding more little uh, facets to the, for, to the um, cloud. Uh, the, by doing that, it makes the cloud look bigger. If you just do one big sort of lump of cloud there and another lump here and maybe one up there, the fact that you can count them is not good. Uh, it, it's not interesting. It's, um, it's got to have a little bit of action going on in it. And um, by adding a few little facets, it makes the, the whole sky look bigger. Now here, I've got a... I've got something that I could probably do with covering slightly. That's so you can hear me walking back and forth here. Um, and it's just the fact that uh, the, the board that I ordered from Amazon was a little bit substandard. If I'd seen it in a shop, I would never have bought it. But of course, it arrived on the doorstep in the middle of a whole load of other nice bits of board. Someone snuck this one in. But anyway, doesn't matter. It's got a few dents and grooves in it, but you can fill them with paint. There we go. Yeah, I sort of quite like that. Now, as I, as I get down to the landscape, as you can see, it's got a very pale blue. And there's a lot of grooves in the wood here. But actually, you know, they don't really show. Uh, what should we do with that? There's a little shape there, I just didn't like that. Okay, now, I think the sky is pretty well where I want it to go. Um, and I'll, I'll get onto the land in a minute and do something there. Just gonna change that slightly there. There we go. Yes, uh, so anyway, what I was saying a second ago, um, if people want to buy a picture, they'll, they'll come asking. I, I must tell you this, I watched um, a YouTube last night and it was a, a um, auction at Sotheby's and um, I think they go on evening or night auctions, I don't know, They'd put it on late so that everyone on the planet can, uh, you know, make bids for paintings. Anyway, it was a contemporary thing and there was a picture of a, a sorry, there was a painting that came up for sale and um, I thought, I've seen that before. I've seen that painting before. And I thought, where have I seen that? And it looked like... Let's have a quick camera shift here. It looked like um, a ceiling tile above my desk when I worked in London. 
You know the type of thing? It's probably made out of polystyrene. It's got a texture to it. It's mostly white with a few grey blot blotches on it. And uh, the more I looked at it, I thought, I know that. I know that ceiling tile. Anyway, it made me laugh because uh, they opened the bidding at over a million pounds. And I thought, oh dear. Maybe I should be painting lands... Um, not landscape. <laughs> Maybe I should be painting uh, abstract. And there were a few pictures like that. Now, I'm not, I'm not anti-abstract. I don't particularly want to do it. Uh, because I don't think I'd be any good at it. Or maybe... Maybe that isn't. It's Maybe it's... Because I know... I wouldn't be able to keep a straight face. Something like that, maybe. Anyway, each to their own. And uh, there were several pictures like that that I thought, wow, how, why, why is it that people are spending vast sums of money on stuff like that? And I just, I, I don't know. I know that the buyers are quite often uh, multinational companies. There are some collectors, obviously, but a lot of them are companies that are getting rid of spare cash. I don't know, anyway. I wouldn't have made a, a good abstract painter, so... There we go. Let's get on to the land now. Let's just have a few little, little flecks down there where the light's catching the cloud on the top. Anyway, if you want to, you know, it's actually very entertaining. Sometimes these auctions uh, are about... You know, you get your classical painting or the Impressionists, something like that. And it's quite fascinating to watch. It's also it's quite good um, ASMR, you know, very calming. Right, and I think that's it for the sky. Keep this, as I said, I'm going to keep this brief. And let's go down, look at the landscape a bit. So for the landscape bit, as you can see, I kept it really simple and it's sort of got a nice sort of, well, I suppose evening, evening colours and I, I want to sort of just play with a bit of green and um, you may be pleased to know that uh, it's not sap green. I always mention sap green. I think pretty well almost every video I talk about sap green. So for those of you who are tired of hearing about it, I'm going to use light green in very small amounts. Palette knife. Okay, let's see what we can do here. I don't want to swamp it with green paint. All I want to do is just a hint. And some of this I'll be wiping off. This is, again, this is glazing with a um, palette knife. It doesn't, doesn't have to be a brush. It's just a, a tool for getting the paint on there. A brush would have worked just as well. But I actually quite like the idea of the texture that it's leaving. Because the paint underneath you see is the dry paint is actually slightly bumpy. Uh, it was painted very quickly in a Zoom class. So it's just literally thrown on. Because the whole thing's done in, I think it was an hour. There is a there is a video of the Zoom class, but I must say the Zoom classes don't video well because it you know it gets uh, recorded by Zoom, and um, they do something to the video. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it gets mashed. Okay, so there we are. Now the question is, I have to ask myself, is how much green do I want to put in it? Do I just want that hint? In fact, I'm leaning towards liking the fact that it's just a hint. Because as, as evening progresses, uh, you know, colours change. Even though, you know, in, in bright sunlight, be a, a green and lush landscape. But of course, in the, in the evening, it all changes. Let's just put a little hint there. Not quite even sure why or even whether that will work. Yeah, it's okay. Right, now what I've got on there is going to get reduced down even more. Reduced down and taken off. 
and all I'm going to do is pull that that way or push it if I push it you'll see what I'm doing and then there's a hint of green just down here so we'll just sort of smudge that a little bit there we go now is that too much not enough tending to think it's too much here because I really I really only want I want it to be like a memory a memory of the color does that make sense so that you know that this landscape isn't on the moon <laughs> it's actually somewhere on the planet in my head well, it's probably about the same as being on the moon there we go yeah subtle it's more of a sky painting anyway and I think that might even be it so I'm gonna end this one here and I uh, hope you've enjoyed it hope you've learned something and if you want to come to a zoom class all the um, info will be um, down there somewhere uh, what else feel free to like this video subscribe comment share it as they say share it and like it until you're blue in the face uh, it all helps with the um, algorithm and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.